Loving. Oh, there's a difference, is there? <laughs> <laughs> All right, gal. Yeah, well, I love it here. Are you getting any? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Claire. Are you getting any? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hot in the shed today, girls. Yeah, I've got loads of washes now tonight. Overtime. Yeah. What are you saving up for, Claire? Oh, you know what? Uh, Deposit. Honour. Flat. Yeah. What's he do, your Ken? Mother's pride, he makes bread. Oh. So he's a master baker, is he? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got me. You're going to marry him. I've got to save up a bit first. Oh, look, you've been giving it away. In an ideal world, where would you like to ma get married, Claire? Uh, Woodford Registry Office. Oh, come on, girl, I said in an ideal world. I've always wanted to get married in the countryside. Uh, Woodford ain't the countryside. But it's near Chigwell. Yeah, mm. and Chigwell ain't the seven fucking Getty. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get yourself some dreams, girl. Yeah, Kaz wants to be an airline pilot, don't you, Kaz? Yeah, before I'm 35. <laughs> Who's going to get on your plane? A woman pilot? Fuck off! Yeah. <laughs> Here's trouble. Morning, Sandra. All right, girls. All right, Sandra, you getting any? Yeah! <laughs> Dirty cow. Oi, Kaz, what have you got your dog seat set on? Seven for welt. It'd be a lot easier if we had a, a what's a name with a, you know. A transport system with a top feed? That'd be too fucking 20th century, that would. <laughs> I put it on seven and it's still sticking. Uh, drop the dog teeth lower than your daft slapper. <laughs> or you some you know thing. Wax? Best get some sleep at night, girl. Who's this one then, Sandra? Richard. What's he do? Everything by the sounds of it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a driver.
I'm an instructor at British School of Motoring. Oh. oh! No, he's not that British School of Motoring, Richard. Yeah, what about him? I've had him! <laughs> <laughs> Whee! Whee! Oh, Jesus. You look tired, Barry. No, I'm not tired. All right, Barry, are you getting any? <laughs> Please don't talk to me. Barry! My attention discs are rubbing together. And they're getting off. <laughs> <laughs> What's your job title, Barry? I'm an apprentice toolmaker. Ooh. Does that involve a lot of grinding? Yeah, <laughs> yeah if you want to make the tools hard. Oh. <laughs> At least it's skilled work, not like sewing. Oi, this is skilled work. Not anymore, it ain't. <laughs> He's all right, it's Barry. I'd take my teeth out for him. Yeah. <laughs> you can machine off. This is official union business. It's our, our, our union, Monty. Yeah, I'm sweating like a fucking kestrel. Oh. <sighs> Conditions in the shed have been minuted at the Health and Safety Committee. Oi, Connie, do you reckon I could get paid for sitting around in union meetings drinking tea? Have you read the union rule book? Yeah, I have. It was brilliant. I couldn't put it down. <laughs> put a sock in it, Beryl. Right. Me and Monty have been at the pay review committee. All along, I've been asking for a re-evaluation of our grading. And I'm here because Connie needs to sign off the new job evaluation scheme. Are we getting a pay rise or not? Yeah. To cut a long story short, you ladies have been evaluated as grade B. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. That's an upgrade then. We work, right? See? Yeah. Yeah. No, it ain't. It's an unskilled grade. What? 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 Who else signed up to this? All the men, the TGW, AU, and the AUEW. I don't care if the RAC, the IMU, and the PMT have signed. We're not signing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I ain't working. I'm skilled in this shitty. Mm. In my book, this is indefensible. Why did you agree to it then? I was outvoted. By the men. Oh. Look, girls, I know what you want. No, you don't. We want templates for this liberate. Yeah. yeah. And new machines. I'm not saying these machines are old, but the manual's in fucking Latin. Yeah. yeah. All right, then. What do you want?
you get that, Monty? Yeah, loud and clear. Don't do that. As I've always said, if a job's worth doing, it can wait until tomorrow. Oh, oh Monty! Monty! Oh, why didn't we know about this, Connie? I've only just found out myself. Uh, no, I think she goes off sworn into these here job evaluation meetings to see a little bit more of a Monty. Oh, and why are we bless. fighting amongst ourselves? You want to fight? All right, outside! Shut it! Beryl! Yeah, mind you, or what's it? Language! Bollocks! What have you got there, comrade? Jammy Dodgers. Whoa! All property is theft, Monty. Listen, the girls are not happy. What's their problem? You've had her, ain't you? That Connie. None of your business, is it? There can be no personal secrets in the revolution, comrade. Me and Connie was a while back. Who else you had in that shed, comrade? Beryl? Uh, sandpaper. Rough. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so they won't sign? No. Connie's not happy. I'm not sneezy. And I'm not Doc. Ah. Ah. Comrade, I represent 2,000 engineers. Here we are. 1,000 fitters. And every one of them's got a proper man's hairy ass. <laughs> Don't do that! It's only your two and the effing woman effing it up. Management? Hopkins? Wait, must have had the Yanks on the blower. Were you letting him in? I don't have a prob with Hopkins. Well, that's because you're a bourgeois revenue running dog. And what are you? West Ham. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, anyone got any farts? <laughs> All right, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Sid, what's this about the NUVB not signing off any of our new grades? <laughs> My boys have signed. It's the girls. Monty? Yeah, the girls are not happy about being downgraded. Who wouldn't be? It's your job, Monty, to persuade them of the bigger picture. Management and union. It's a long game. It's test match cricket. It's a game of give and take. If I scratch your back... I scratch yours. And what a beautiful back it is, Mr. Hopkins. Thank you, Bill and Sid. Yeah. Monty, it's a done deal. The vote was overwhelming. The men are happy. 5,000 men, 200 women. You can't win. Oh. Monty, your hands are tied. And I've got your balls in a Kenwood shell. <laughs> Look, can we do some procedure so things don't go to head? Sid, any ideas? We could confuse the poor little darlings with some totally incomprehensible bollocks. Oh, oh, the grievance procedure. The grievance procedure was Connie's idea. She'll have to comply. That is brilliant. Tomorrow morning, head office. Wally. Afternoon. After lunch. Bernie in. Oh. Oh. Go on then. Fuck off, Monty. Win him over. If you're not back in half an hour, we'll drag the river. Way. Way. is B grade. The cleaners. Unskilled assembly. And my Eddie. We ain't unskilled. No, it's not just anyone who can thread to a needle. Yeah, yeah, we have to take three tests to get in here. Exactly. All right, ladies. Uh, I've spoken to management. Bastards. And they're going to assist on registering a formal grievance. Hang on. I just thought, what about the girls at Dunton? Yeah, they yeah. do the same <laughs> job as us. Yeah. They have been anonymously given C grade. Skilled. Oh, How are they skilled or not? They work in a pressurised environment. <laughs> we got our own environmental problems here. Like what? Uh, like that. Don't do that. I bet your Ford American factories ain't like this. Mm -hmm. We go head office tomorrow then. Me, Connie and Sid. I don't want Sid. 
I want one of the girls. Take Beryl. Yeah, take Beryl. She can do the swearing for you. <laughs> Don't type Beryl. She can start a fight. Ina. Claire feels. Yeah. We won a fight. I'll go. I'll tell her. Yeah, what would you tell him, Claire? I'd say, uh, I'd say. Well, here is a thing, and the thing here is this. I don't know what's up. You're taking the piss, because something ain't right, and something is wrong. There's a smell in the air, and the bong is quite strong. I've been at this game since I was 14. I know my moves is called. Do you know what I mean? So Uchi Kapuchua, Laudi Dying Goodbye. I am what I am, because I'm me, I ain't I. Is this a one? I know what's going on. <laughs> yes, I know the game. <laughs> and I know the wolf's here. <laughs> oh, I know what's his name. <laughs> and I know what's right. <laughs> and I know what's fear. <laughs> but it's thing and it's thing. <laughs> but I know I ain't there. <laughs> Let's not you know. I'm bloody, 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 bloody. Yeah, no, yeah, no. everything else up. <laughs> <laughs> it won't work, love. Why not? Uh, because you couldn't find your own arse with both two hands. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Rhea? Yeah, yeah Rhea. Rhea. Oh, no. no, me no. I can't talk all that union stuff. It's a day off school. Yeah, Bernie in. Free lunch. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right then. <laughs> All right, machine off, everyone. We're doing no more work <laughs> today. No, 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 no. All workplace disputes have to be arbitrated with a grievance procedure, or else we'll be up Shit Creek without a paddle. If all you want to paddle, mate, I'll fucking hit you on. You come in here, Monty, swinging your dick around like you're running the country. While well, you ain't running the country. Yeah, you ain't running the country, not someone else. Oh, God, Claire. That's Claire. How many strikes has the UK suffered this year? 26,000, Prime Minister. We're 66 for industrial productivity, behind Chad. Where is Chad? 65th, sir. Chad is a small African nation with 17 goats and a string farm. 17 goats and a string farm? And they're ahead of Great Britain? All their goats work. Britain is currently on top of the World League table for industrial unrest. Champions! <laughs> <coughs> Uh, you can take your coat off, Prime Minister. You're indoors. Gannex, pay me to wear it. At all times. It's work. I'm trying to set an example. What would you do if you were me? What's your political strategy? You have to fake sincerity. And brush up your Machiavelli. <laughs> what would you do if you were me? What kind of leader would you be? Every day a crisis or surprise. Do you stand firm or compromise? 
There's always a problem waiting in the wings. That's always been the problem for prime ministers and kings. But what keeps me up at night and makes me very tense is the problem with the balance of payments. Uptight, highly strong, makes it very tense when it comes to the balance of payments. Imports, exports, deficit or surplus. Capital inflows, economic circus. In layman's terms, when it comes down to it, if you buy more than you sell, then you are really in the shit. The correct term is visible trade deficit. You can call it what you like, and we are really in the shit. There's always a problem waiting in the wings. That's always been the problem for Prime Ministers and Kings. We make great things which we sell when we can, but the whole world wants to buy German. Another little problem with which we all are blessed is a great deal of industrial unrest. Strikes here, strikes there, it just amazes me when the daffodils come out the men come out in sympathy. We need ideas, we need a plan to put the great into Great Britain. Upside high, the trembles in a sweat when he thinks of the side of the great about quantitative easing. I don't need it. I'm very regular. But this is an emergency. In an emergency, I'll have two black coffees and a cigarette. Printing money. Printing money? Can we do that? Brilliant! I know my bloody problems in the bloody wings. And the printing cash shall make us all more powerful the kings. This is the boss of plans you can run going to be. Printing money never solved anyone's problems. You're going to have to take on the unions. I'll create a new cabinet post. Secretary of State for taking on the unions. Candidates? Michael Foote. Communist. He won't be happy until we're eating pickled beetroot, drinking petrol, and shagging our sisters. <laughs> Barbara Castle? But she's a minister of transport. Is she busy? She's learning to drive. Get her in here. But she's a woman. Good. She can do her own typing. Here I am for what he wants. I haven't got all day, you know. Just bought in a breathalyzer. All you have to do is blow. I'm fighting for an ideal world, as well as all the household chores. But don't forget your seatbelt, please. I just passed a seatbelt law. What is it, Prime Minister? Spit it out, I'm a busy woman. Fiery, like her hair. Barbara, you know when you've lent your lawnmower to a friend because you can see that the neighbourhood would be improved if he mowed his lawn? He forgets to return it. He starts to think it is. He goes around mowing other people's lawns. He's out of control. Field mice and voles who's a rabbit hats. Every green shoot is mowed down. Until finally, a once green and pleasant land is brown and lifeless. If you want to talk about the union's abuse of power, don't use silly metaphors. I don't beat around the bush. Fiery, like her hair. The Labour Party is dependent on the trade union movement. You can't tell me anything about the trade me movement. I paid my first union dues when they were still on the tips. Barbara, Barbara, it's easy being the opposition. It's just a lot of eating and drinking. But we're the government now. I came into politics to improve the lot of the working classes. Rome wasn't built in a day. This is a crisis. Secretary of State for taking on the unions. Have you got the balls for it? I know I have. I've never seen them. I've been hiding them under a bushel. Barbara, you're the right man for the job. Don't let me down. Right, you jump to it. I'm the working class with the TUC in here today. What do we need? We need six pork pies, 12 scotch eggs, and a party can of Watney's Red Barrel. Good. Anything for you, ma'am? I'll have a cup of tea and a chocolate finger. <laughs> 
next month. Unless I get it all written down now, I'll never get through it. Oh, give the revolution a break, will you? Get pissed and forget we're celebrating! Woo! Rita's 10th wedding anniversary. Rita, what did he get you? <gasps> Flowers. Flowers? You'd be lucky. Do you know what you got me for Christmas? <gasps> a baby doll Nikey. A tartan shopping trolley. <laughs> 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 oh, don't let this put you off marrying Ken, Claire. I had seven happy years with my husband. And seven out of the 25 ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> Go on then. Why ain't B-grade good enough for you then, eh? Because we're, you know, skilled. Yeah, but you sat down all day. Uh, did Ford give you a test to see if you could stand up? <laughs> no. Then standing ain't a skill then, is it? None of you can lift 300 Cortina wheels in a day. Oh. You don't get it, do you? <laughs> You can't have 6,000 areas blokes sweating away and in less than a woman. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our first half of the evening, halfway public transport. <laughs> Took the mother in law on safari last year. Yeah. yeah. Got attacked by three lions. Yeah. And my wife says, Are you going to help? Yeah. I said, No, three should be enough. <laughs> <laughs> She's a big woman. The mother in law. Yeah. She joined one of them gymnasiums. Yeah. Got on the rowing machine and the bloody thing sucked. Oh! <laughs> oh, you got any jokes about fat men? Yeah. Oh, hello, gorgeous. Woman's liver, eh? Burn your bra. I'd pay to see that. Oh! All right, so this is fat bloke, yeah? Yeah. And there's another really, really fat bloke. Yeah. Here. They're in the pub and, uh, I don't know, whatever. And, um, they're really fat, hairy, stinky, and smelly. Yeah. Yeah. And then the ceiling caves in and fucking kills them all. Yeah. Oh. Off the stage, off the stage. We've got another act coming. All right, V. That's enough. Don't you tell me what to do, Eddie. What have I done? You don't even know what you've not done, do you? What's today? Oh, no, is it? It fucking is. Um, I'm sorry, V. What can I say? Happy birthday oh. to you. Oh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rita. Happy birthday to you. I'm going home and it ain't my birthday. <laughs> it ain't no birthday. When'd you get married, Eddie? Uh, oh. 
Millwalls last season in Division 3 South. <laughs> so that's. 1958. Ten years. I've been married about ten years. Ten years, exactly. Exactly, baby. What? <laughs> to the day. Oh, shit. Go after her, Eddie. All she needs is sorry. Be away! <laughs> <laughs> Vita, wait! It's our anniversary, Eddie, and you forgot. Look, I remember every second of our honeymoon. I do. Test me. Test you? Piss off. I don't need reminding that we loved each other ten years ago. Look, I know I'm a git, but you have to admit, when it comes down to it, I admit I'm a git. I ain't got a clue. Well, that much is true. All I can say oh, is, oh, here it comes. I'm sorry, but I love you. I'm just a man with a foolish friend. I promise that I'll never, 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 ever, never forget again. When you're not here. Just a man with a foolish brain. I promise that I'll never, 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 ever, never get the gas. You my soul. Without you, I'm not home. There ain't a single thing that I can do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've had enough. I'm sorry. Oh, come on, Ed! I'm sorry! I'm sick of it. Sorry. Sick of it. Sorry. Sick of it. Sorry. Sorry. How many times you want me to tell you How many times I'm sorry Cause I lost at 92 I'm sorry I'm sorry but I love you He's just a We're all right. 
Are we? Yeah, we're all right. Of course we're all right. Mr. Button's cane and our Graham, and it ain't right. Remember Mr. Perkins? Virgin Perkins. Yeah, woodwork. He used to put me head in the vice and burn me with cigarettes. What's your point? Didn't do him any harm. I think he canes him because he's a scholarship boy. I'm going to go in and complain. I love you, Eddie. Hey there, sleepy dreamer. I just want to say I love you loads. You stupid sod. Snuggles. Yes, darling. These eggs taste funny. They're duck eggs. Why am I eating duck eggs? I'm not Albanian. Well, for a change, I've started buying whatever's one to the left, what I usually buy. Also, we've got no coffee, but also domestos. Right. Let's go out for dinner and we can talk then. I'm sorry, I've got to go. I'm at the head office this morning. Mr. Buckton caned Perry yesterday. He can hardly sit down. Why? What had he done? He'd farted in Latin. Ho oh, ho, impressive. Most people can't speak Latin. Oh, sir, quite happy for his son to be physically abused by a sadist. It's an expensive public school. I'd be disappointed if he wasn't getting abused. I remember one time we were playing rugby, at rugby, in rugby, and we lost 73 nil. To be honest, we were lucky to get nil. And we were given six of the best on the hand. On the hand. Now that does hurt. Bottoms are for girls. Now, what have you got today, darling? A Tupperware party. <laughs> I thought I'd wash up. Do the ironing, polish off a couple of bottles of vodka, and set fire to the Women's Institute. I'm sorry, darling, I've got to rush. Oh, you weren't listening, were you? Oh, look, Snuggles, I'm sorry. I just want to know what I'm expected to do all day long in the middle of the Essex countryside. Don't start, not now. Oh, when is it a good time to start? Look, I bought you a horse. It doesn't like me. <sighs> look, I'm under a lot of pressure at the moment, and I need you to stand beside me now. I've got to go. Travel at the mill. Ta-da! Let me guess, Mrs. O'Grady. Yeah, well done. How can I help? I'm not, what I want to say is, you've been caning my son. Yes. Oh, so you admit it then. An integral element of an elite education is discipline, ergo. Ergo, is that, is that Latin, is it? Yes, it means therefore. Ergo, it is incumbent on me to cane your son to constrain his natural recalcitrance. I don't know what that word means, Eva. He's insolent. He kicks against tradition, and like most of the scholarship boys, he subscribes to the latest fashion of individualism, which is antithetical to the core values of this school. I don't want you caning him. He's a child. Oh, go. It ain't right. I'm afraid your outrage is misplaced. Oh, my outrage. Do you want your boy to do A-levels? To go to university? Well, I do. Are you saying that you'd be happier to see him leave at 16 and get a job in some factory? I don't know if you've ever been to a factory, but... I work in a factory! Then you should know better! Now, is there anything else that I can help you with? No. No. Excuse oh, me! piss off! I beg your pardon. Oh my God, I'm sorry. I thought you were a teacher. Mr. Buckton's cane in my boy. Uh, mine too, that's why I'm here. Oh, Rita O'Grady. Lisa Hopkins. I like the dress. It's Bieber. Someone should do something about it. Not the dress. Leave the dress alone. The dress is perfect. The color looks great on you. The dress is fab. <laughs> sorry, I get a bit weird when I've got the arm. We should start a petition. What do you think? Shall we? Oh God, I don't know. I'm not political. It's not politics. I'm not asking you to stand up to Parliament. It's cruelty, and we parents have to stand up to them. 
Yeah, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, I've got to go. Do not cry, do not cry, do not fall, do not speak. Do not howl for your mommy or your granny when you sleep. Crush your feelings and never ever count. Prepare for a career in the corridors of power. So Barbara, you've had those lovely legs of yours under the desk for a week now. Who do you blame for this country's pitiful record of industrial productivity? The problem as I see it, we have to get our people to go to work and stay there. We have a no-strike agreement with the TUC. Are you mad, woman? I told you the Labour Party is dependent on the TUC. This is not easy for me either. It's tearing me apart. This is my draft white paper in place of strikes. We need to ban strikes. We can't ban strikes. The TUC have six million block votes at the Labour Party conference. They bought me this pipe. They pay for my holidays in the Silly Isles. They underlay in my bathroom. But Harold? No, Barbara. You've got this all wrong. I'm going. And I'm not coming back until you've got a solution. Dockers, miners, train drivers, denim ladies. I don't mind the TUC striking when the Tories are in, but we're Labour. They're pissing on their own doorstep. What about management? They have to take responsibility. It takes two to tango. Don't try and bamboozle me with choreography. I don't care that you're Prime Minister. Prime Minister, you've given me this job. You have to let me do it my way or I'll turn on you. And you don't want that because I'm like a she-lion. And have you ever seen a she-lion drag down a wildebeest? I'm from Huddersfield. Get out. I would if I could. That door, there, men! This menu's like reading the Kama Sutra. Everything sounds nice, but I can't picture any of it. <laughs> Headache? Yeah. You're lying. Yeah. Oi, madame. Why is Monty not sitting with us? He says at the hotel next door. Hotel? He only lives in Barking. You don't understand expenses, do you? So, come on. Did you and Monty ever... Once. Scarborough, 1953. Labour Party conference. But only once. You learned your lesson, eh? Yeah, don't drink and operate heavy machinery. It's all going off behind the curtains, then. Why didn't you ever marry? Monty? I don't know, he couldn't have been the only single fella in Essex. He was a good dancer, but I didn't love him. And I'd already married the Labour Party. What a lousy husband he turned out to be. He was trying to change the world. I didn't want to be my mum. The drudge, the grind, low wages, factory work. Cheer up, Con. You can't be miserable in the Bernie Inn. You've done a lot. You got was a grievance procedure. A grievance procedure is not changing the world. Yesterday, when I started out, I knew it all. I had no doubt. Life was there in front of me. Just be who you want to be. Started work way too young. Same as all the blokes. Worked our fingers to the bone, making do by making jokes. But now I'm older, looking back, it doesn't seem so funny. Same work, same hours, but half the money. It's an age old story, it's an age old tale. Still the same old reasons that are there to make us fail. Second up the crumbs change is always promised but somehow never comes I joined the Labour Party on the shoulders of the great emancipated teenager who didn't have time to wait fierce, feisty full of fight a warrior, a dreamer 30 years on, I am still a union convener. You all say to me, 
stick with it. We need you. What have I achieved? A grievance procedure. It's an age old story. It's an age old tale. Still the same old reasons that are there to make us fail. Always on the outside, kicking at the door. Looks like a glass ceiling. doesn't have to be just about C grade. What do you mean? If we got C grade tomorrow, we'd still be earning less than a man on C grade. 87%, that ain't too bad. Did Martin Luther King ask for 87% of rights for black people? You know they shot him. I'm here to get C grade back, nothing else. Women have never had equal pay. What about your Sharon? She sinks when she's 26. Do you want her to be on 87%? She wants to be a doctor. <laughs> she could be. Nothing changes if it isn't challenged. You could change the story. You could change the tale. Don't fall for all those reasons that are there to make us fail. We have to make it our time. Why can't our time be now? Ain't got time for waiting. Free to make it now. Afternoon, Monty. Afternoon, gentlemen. Afternoon, Monty. Right, today we've got the ladies. Way! <laughs> one shop's do it, Connie Riley. She knows her respects the uh, procedures. I'm one of the uh, oh, troublemakers. <sighs> they fit. Hubble, please. It's just a joke. They threatened to walk out yesterday. That is hardly a joking matter. I'll have to lay off 5,000 men if I don't get the continuous supply of Cortina seats. We can park this in a grievance procedure. Connie was instrumental in setting it up, so she ain't gonna argue about it, is she? We can do what we like then. Sit under our thumbs. <laughs> Mucky. Hubble, that remark was not worthy. A personnel director. Sorry, it's just a joke. Ugh. Your management and I'm union. But we're men, and this is our world. The world of work. It's when we go home, it's when we're in the old doghouse. Right, I'll go round them up. Woof, woof! Right, there are three walls, two of them. We've got the upper hand. Connie's done these before. It's all collective agreements, procedure, so leave her talking to us here, Rita. Oh, I'll keep my mouth shut. I'm just making up the numbers. <laughs> Terrific. You know, Connie Riley, shop steward, river plant. This is Rita O'Grady. Um, hmm. Machinist, this is personal director, and this right here, this is Ford Dagenham's manager, Jeremy Hopkins. Oh, hello, I've never met you before. Oh, sorry, I'll shut up now. The NUVB executive supported the job evaluation exercise. True, but my mem's at the river plant. The girls. Yes, the girls are reluctant to sign it off. Yeah, sorry. Fortunately, we now have the grievance procedure. Partly due to your efforts in the past, Connie. Yes, we do wish to register a formal grievance. We have no objections to formal grievance hearings being granted under the formally agreed formal grievance procedure. So you're going to grant their girls their grading grievance before the grading committee on their grounds that their grading grievance can be gripped in the grading grievance if they grieve enough? Granted. Great, grand. We're grateful. When is the next grievance committee? September. Agreed.
hang on, I ain't working on B-grade for three months. We're skilled workers. That is to be discussed in September. You have to take three tests before you get in the door. Ergo, we must be skilled. Ergo? Yes, bloody ergo. Do they take three tests? Of course we test them. He tests us because he, he can't afford to just let anybody loose on his expensive leatherette. And what about the girls at Dunton? They're on C-grade. There are only two girls at Dunton. And what's that got to do with anything? No. Come on. Don't tell me my outrage is misplaced. It's the principle. <laughs> girls at Dunton have to work under pressure. I have to make 300 pieces a day. You try working with that monkey on your back. Dunton is a research and development facility. There are no drawings. We ain't working from drawings neither. Go through that shed. You won't find a single template. Rita. Don't read to me, Monty. All right? So what you're saying is you're skilled enough to do our jobs, yeah? All right, so uh, what needle would you use for leatherette? Full point or cruel? Look. What would you set your dog teeth on for real leather? Do you even know what dog teeth are? All right, last question. What brush would you use to sweep the yard? A yard brush. Correct. Well done, mister. You could be a cleaner. Every job has been analysed across 28 characteristics. 28 characteristics and the sex of whoever does it. £17 for a 40-hour week is Don't not... Don't insult me, all right? You know what we want. Are we getting equal pay or not? Equal pay? This isn't about equal pay. Connie. Why isn't it about equal pay? This, this is not an equal pay issue. It wasn't, but it is now. You've made it one. But, 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 the, the grievance procedure was your idea. 15 years ago, and you've been abusing it ever since. Come on, Connie, we're going. You can shove your grievance procedure where the sun don't shine. Oh, and good to meet you, by the way. A cup of tea would have been nice, but I'd guess that skill would work. Met the management. Bastards. What did they say? All right, machine off, everyone. Rita wants to make a speech. I said the girls at Dunton are on C grade. Yeah. yeah. I said you must be skilled because you test us. Yeah. yeah. I said I've had it up to here. Yeah. yeah. I said we're sick of talking about it. We want something done. Yeah. yeah. So we've got a vote now. All right, what are we voting for? A strike. Hands up, all in favour. <laughs> Drugs. What are you going to do about it? They're your fault. Yeah, Monty, what the fuck are you going to do about it? Your union does not support an office for industrial action. There's no more talking, no conversation. Monty here from the NUVB River Plan. Hopkins? Listen, it's the girls. They all seem to walk out on us. Shit, put it on. Hey, what time is it in America? I am not the speaking clock. <laughs> Sydney. Is there a strike? All the classic signs. There's a brazier, a picket line, and a barricade. If we had an orchestra, it could be a bloody musical. <laughs> Why are women working? Well, they're not working, they're on strike. 
No Labour government will be pushed around by a lot of women with dyed hair. So they make the seats for the cars. Or fit the cars with sunroof so we can all drive standing up. So I have to think of everything. What's your name, darling? Sandra. Oh, hi, Sandra. Gives a bit of leg then. Stella! Oi! <laughs> she's not on the game, she's on strike. There's my card, baby. Let me see that. Fiesta. That's a bleeding porn mag! <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> Ladies, is your intention the whole production of the new Ford Cortina? Of course yeah. it is. I know this management. Bastards. They'll just get their finished seats from Liverpool. <laughs> So, what can we do, Ben? We need some working class solidarity. Oh, fucking hell. We need the girls in Liverpool to strive. Everybody out, everybody out, everybody out, everybody out. Everybody out. want women. Tell me something I didn't know. No, the women are on strike. I have one week of live cartons left. One week before I have to shut down the whole Ford UK operation. Who's the ringleader? Rita O'Grady. Anarchist? Communist? Housewife and working mother. Oh my god, they're the worst. Okay, I'm coming over. Put the kettle on. On toast. Chips on toast? Why? Well, I can cook chips, I can cook toast. You're alright, love. Yeah, we'll be alright. You do what you have to do, love. Everybody we don't want money. We want proper money. Out. 